So I shot a video almost a year ago about making millions from a $500 investment in less than three years. Many of you specifically asked me how, the details, the blueprint, why? This pandemic. This pandemic has shocked a lot of people. A lot, a lot of people are looking for different ways and avenues to make money. And I want to give you a blueprint in this video. More specifically, in the last five years, we went from that to a $42 million business. So I'm going to share with you this video starting in three, two, one. Let's go. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy Matt Cipolla here, hailing to you from Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois, a direct west suburb of downtown Chicago. And I want to say thank you as we've crossed over 25,000 subs, and our next journey is hitting 50,000 subs. So make sure, please, hit subscribe and hit notification to be uploaded next time we upload our next episode. So therefore, you can start thinking like a millionaire, strategizing like a millionaire, so therefore, you can become a first-generation cash flow Millionaire. By the way, we officially launched our merchandise site, so please go to sevenfiguresquad.com to pick up your gear. Okay, let's get into it. Let me cut to the chase. I am in the life insurance business. I started selling life insurance and annuities for a period of 12 years when I left the United States Marine Corps. Now, if you don't like the nobility of helping people, if you don't like having a business that has a meaningful impact to the people in your community, and your commissions and income come second, then this video is not for you. I didn't want you to waste your time, but thanks so much for stopping by. Are we good? Bet. So let me cut to the chase. I was in the Marine Corps eight years. I took $500 as a transition career. I was thinking about real estate, but I chose insurance. I took $500, pre-licensing courses, to get my state insurance license in California before I transitioned to Illinois. And for 12 years, I became a personal producer. I was the number one sales producer out of 25,000 licensed agents at my insurance marketing organization I was a part of called Personalized Broker Services. With that being said, as a combat veteran, I had zero sales experience. I had zero life insurance experience. I had zero financial services or even business experience. But my entry point into the life insurance industry was one of three different options. Number one is a career. I either work for somebody, I sit down for an interview, hopefully they consider me, they hire me, and I have salary, I have benefits, 401k, pension perhaps, I have a W-2, I have a boss, and possibly, most likely, I have a quota. If I don't meet that quota, I don't meet it back to back, three months, four months, whatever, I get fired. My book of business is gone, which could have been a lot of my friends, my family, my network that I earned with my blood, sweat, and tears, shaking hands, but if I didn't do my job as a career agent, I'm gone. The second way you can get involved in the life insurance industry is as an independent contractor. You get in there, you get past the exam, you hang your license with an independent marketing organization just like I did, and they have you at a higher commission contract level, much higher than a career agent, because they don't provide you salary, they don't provide you benefits, they don't provide you leads, they don't provide you 401k, and you're on your own. Now, they're not going to help you either. They're not going to help you with management. They're not going to help you with, uh, uh, with, with coaching and consulting. No, no, no. you got to buy those people because you are an independent contractor. You don't work for them. You work for yourself. You have a practice. You may not have a business, but you have a practice. And the third way to get involved in life insurance business, as I discovered, was either a hybrid model where they provide a platform, they provide some form of corporate structure and organization, and most importantly, they provide you mentorship. But a little bit about that later on here in a second. And I realized going through my career that I need a lot of help. As I mentioned earlier, I needed a coach, I needed consultants, I needed people to help, help me, to help me manage myself. You know, and so I spent about $50,000 in coaches and consultants through self-learning and self-education. So Matt, you just talked about 500 bucks. I know, but over that period of 12 years, I was making money, making money. I'll get into those numbers here in a second. I was earning money, making money, earning money, making money. So it initially started off with $500, but since I made money, I reinvested back into myself. I, again, I reinvested back, back to the seven terms of courses. I went back to DePaul's, uh, I went to DePaul University here, a certified financial planning curriculum to learn more about financial services in a more formal type of way. Never took the final exam, but I learned it from a very formal way. Never got my CFP, but I got the education down at DePaul University. And, uh, 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 and I realized that there's three major skills that I needed after, at the end of the day. And so these three major skills that I got involved in financial services were understanding how to get along with people. How do you get along with human nature? When people are having a good day or a bad day, people are urgent or people are rushing to get you off the phone or urgent to, to meet with you and then move on right away or they had time. I understand human nature. I learned, learned body language. I learned how to uh, create PowerPoints and presentations to therefore I can attract people. I need to learn human interaction, which is a uh, hard thing to come by today, especially with everybody behind Zooms and people behind um, 
cell phones and smartphones and texting and messaging, their human interactions continue to go down and down and down uh, over, over time. The second thing here is basic financial money one-on-one. That's another major skill I needed to be successful in, is basic knowledge of money. Basic budgeting, basic understanding of financial statements, basic insurance one-on-one, understanding 401ks, retirement plans, basic articulation and vocabulary of this category. Nothing fancy, nothing crazy, but basic a financial money one-on-one, which a lot of people don't have to begin with, which blows my mind away. By the way, would you agree with that, that a lot of people are lacking financial literacy? It is in home economics that you learn in grade school or junior high or high school. It's not home economics. It's more like a cooking class or they teach you about baking cookies and basic budgeting. It's nothing really about home economics. There's not really much economics about it. But uh, the real life, you know, adulting and the reality of paying bills and raising a family, well, that will teach you a financial money 101. But sadly, with the bad experiences of money, not necessarily the good. And the third area here in terms of understanding major skills to be successful in this progression was understanding that I needed to embrace personal development and leadership development. I understand that I had to grow. I had to develop as a human being. I had to improve my skill set. I had to improve, improve myself as a human nature. I was growing or I was, I was dying inside as an individual. I think there's a very famous saying from, from Martin Luther King. He says, most people die at 25. They just get buried at 65. Why? Because they didn't commit to personal development. They didn't commit to helping other people. They didn't commit to leadership development. Now, the most interesting thing about my marination into the insurance industry is that I would rub elbows with attorneys and CPAs and investment advisors and people dealing with high net worth individuals with trusts and wills and estates, uh, things that I'd never heard before in my entire life. And it was way above my, uh, my pay grade there or, or even more so my personal financial identity. I mean, honestly, I grew up thinking that rich people were snobs. Why? Because I wasn't raised around rich people. I mean, were you raised by a rich person? And what did you think about rich people? What I found out by rubbing elbows with a lot of these folks is they were more not necessarily snobby, they're more like elitist type thinking, but if you ask the right questions, you got to get to know them and you engage your people skills and you ask the right type of questions, they were more than happy to share with you their experiences and their thoughts and their progressions about some complexity that went on in their career. Now, once I began my career, I started to realize the major financial impact we would make as insurance professionals in people's lives. Some of the books that I read initially in my career was Rich Dad, Poor Dad, The Cashflow Quadrant, and Rich Dad's Guide to Investing. Major books that impacted my life. I started to embrace and love the fact that when most people would have a financial catastrophe, a major change in their lives, that we would be there with a check to reduce some of the pain and suffering they were going through. We couldn't reduce or eliminate the loss they were, su- they were suffering through, but we can definitely lessen the burden. Now, I'd find myself pinballing through this industry, producing, 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 burnout, producing, burnout, until I ran into my current mentor, Patrick Bet David, who's mentored me for the last five and a half years. I experienced a lot of wins surrounded by a lot of tough losses because of making bad decisions with my money and worse, doing business with the wrong partners. Patrick taught me four phases that we go through as an entrepreneur. Number one, first phase that a lot of people feel a lot of success with is becoming a sales leader. Not being the mediocre guy, but actually leading in sales, which is what I did. You figure out the game. You figure out the ones, twos, threes, the ABCs of how to make sales in your industry, which I did and I figured out in the life insurance industry. And then I thought I was going to be a manager. I think I was going to create my own practice. I was going to create my own my own company, my own firm. I spent $20,000, $30,000, $40,000 just in branding and building a website and brochures and folders and what do you call that? Letterhead and business cards and envelopes. Spent all that money attempting to become a sales manager, slipping into a business owner, hoping that one day I'd slide into number four, which is becoming a CEO and growing this huge enterprise in my mind. And uh, here's the reality though. Myself, along with a lot of my peers and colleagues, we never get out of number one, number two. We get stuck in sales. We get stuck in this financial corner called sales leadership and sales management. We'd never get out of it, and I'll explain why here in a second. With that being said, I busted my tail and approximately did $3 million in sales, and I would average for those 12 years, approximately $250,000 per year in sales, some higher, some lower, and I bring home a multiple six-figure income. So if you are looking for an industry that you can get involved in with sales to make six-figure in, here it is. Let me give you the formula. The formula for me, which is still a successful formula today, which is used by a lot of financial advisors and insurance professionals, as well as realtors and mortgage people, is I put a direct mail piece in the mail, inviting them to a dinner seminar. So I put 5,000 pieces of mail, 
in three different zip codes to get them to a seminar where I would feed them, I'd entertain them, I'd shake hands with them, and hopefully I'd get to know a lot of them. So the reality is of the 5,000 I sent out, 1% would RSVP, which is approximately 50 people. So 50 people would RSVP, half would show, and this is where I came up with my 50% rule. So 25 people would actually show up of the 50 that reserved, of which 50% of them would flake on my appointment, 50% of them would agree to do business with me, and 50% of them would say, okay, the transaction, let's follow this through, let me sign a dotted line, let me cut you the check. So I come out with those 50 people that RSVP. From the 5,000 people that I invited, three to four new approximate clients, thereby in financial service making anywhere between 10 and $30,000 of commissions, depending on the portfolio of insurance or annuities that we put together. Now, I did that year in and year out for 12 straight years. And what did I face? What experience? Boom. Burnout. The reality is a lot of people, if they're stuck in number one, number two, for an extended period of time, eventually they're going to burn out. Eventually, this is going to be a grind. Eventually, they don't want to do this anymore. If there's anything that I learned through this progression, if there's anything I learned for 12 years, hopefully I'm saving you some grief, that I learned for these 12 years that if I was ever going to join the seven-figure squad, to earning a cash flow millions of dollars a year, I needed one word, one process integrated into my practice, which is called systems. Systems. And that's what my mentorship and progression with Patrick by David, a lot of you may find him on Value Tainment, is the number one channel for entrepreneurs in the world. And I realized I needed systems. So let me explain how we converted our system. So I explained earlier about a hybrid model. What is a hybrid model? Let me break that down. Let me unpack that for you. A hybrid model is a combination of a few things. Number one is a combination of franchise. Why do people buy franchises? There's a proven system, there's a proof of concept, there's standard operating procedures, there's already existing branding, there's already a head start. If somebody wants to be an entrepreneur, be a business owner, a franchise gives somebody a head start for a small nominal fee for their system. The second thing is understanding insurance sales, understanding being a professional inside the insurance industry, understanding the difference between term and permanent insurance, understanding the, the difference between fixed annuities and variable annuities and index annuities, understanding why people need a will and a trust, understanding why people need to do a 401k rollover, how to maximize a pension, how to accelerate the payment of the, uh, the, the biggest debt they have in their life, which is most likely their mortgage debt, how to accelerate the retirement date versus retiring at 75, how do I retire at 65, how to make sure for the rest of my life I never run out of money. These are all the aspects of being an insurance professional, teaching people the rules of the money game and winning the rules of the money game. And the third element in this platform is understanding the best of network marketing. Yes, network marketing. Now, I've run across a lot of network marketing. Matter of fact, when I was in the Marine Corps, uh, I was presented an opportunity to get involved in this thing called uh, Excel telecommunications, where I would sell long distance services to my fellow Marines. And when we get deployed, we sit in long lines for the, for, the, for the phones. We dial the 800 number, so therefore we can call home for our loved ones back in the United States of America. And we spend 15 minutes on the phone. And that telephone bill, all that, that service members paying the bill, just like they do with MCI or Sprint or AT&T or, or at that time Pac Bell, it would go to us in terms of a business opportunity. So that was my first entrance into understanding network marketing. I also ran across network marketing when I had family members in the basement that had laundry detergent and, and, uh, um, uh, and cleaning products in the basement. And they were selling things called Amway. But here's the downside to network marketing. A lot of people in the network marketing industry, number one, they don't treat it like a profession. They don't treat it like a business. Why? Because it's such a low barrier to entry. Uh, furthermore, a lot of people in the network marketing industry, sadly, and by the way, this is not a shot to not pursue your network marketing dreams, but a lot of people in the network marketing industry simply just don't make a full-time income considering the amount of hours and years they put into the business. And so when I combined the best of a franchise, becoming an insurance professional, becoming a network marketer, and finding out the pros and the cons, and eliminating the cons and keeping the pros, guess what we discovered? A hybrid model to be a successful entrepreneur in the insurance industry and start to drive systems and definitely start to scale. Because with this business alone, even without a system, even without a network marketing type of approach to it, or a, or a compensation system, Based on personal production alone, I was able to still be successful selling life insurance, dropping 5,000 pieces in the mail, and still making 150 to 200 to 250,000 dollars of income per year after expenses and marketing expenses. So this industry about being involved in the life insurance industry was already successful in itself just in a personal production model. 
However, back to burnout. I don't want to burn out. I want to be able to create an income, a lifestyle. So therefore, I'm earning income without always having to be involved and pushing the buttons. So therefore, we transition with this model into an agency building system. I repeat, an agency building system. It's similar to how people build property. They buy real estate. They fix up the property. They rent it out. And a piece of property starts kicking out passive income. But what's the downside to real estate investing? A large amount of down payments, a lot of management that you have to upkeep, and a lot of overhead. Whereas compared to building an agency, you have a buy-in into leadership development, mentorship, and a volume of sales. And where does your money come from? From the volume of life insurance policies and annuities that are sold. That you're not depending upon your own personal pen or an individual's sales volume, sales production, for you to be successful as an entrepreneur inside the insurance industry. I'll give a breakdown here in a second about how our income and cash flow looks like. So as an example, when we started here in Chicago, we expanded with our four or five offices using this model of building agencies. We had four or five agencies here in the local market. And we expanded to Northern California and Southern California, Las Vegas, Tennessee, Atlanta, Arkansas, Texas, Mississippi, Florida, the DMV area, North Carolina, Ohio, and on and on and on without any restrictions on regions or territories that a career agent or a typical traditional insurance company would impose. The unique side about our business is that we don't have to manufacture anything. We didn't have to carry any inventory. There's no cost for us to manufacture a product, nor was it cost for us to store a product. Why? It's insurance policies. It's annuities. It's people's retirement savings. We needed no ads. I, I thought that uh, we need to put more invitations in the mail. Listen, the last five and a half years, we spent zero dollars in social media ads, zero dollars in direct mail uh, uh, ads, zero time spent cold calling or door-to-door -door sales. Uh, uh, money, there's no money to maintain, unlike a piece of real estate property, right, or bad roof or sidewalk or lawns that you need to uh, mow or, or ice that you need to clear. There's no money to maintain this type of business. Now, granted, you might have staff, you might have assistants, you might have an office like we do, and furthermore, you don't need any money to scale. So all this expansion can be done without what? Spending a dime of money for expansion into other offices because we have a standard operating procedure to build an agency. In other words, anybody can come from any background, experience, education, just like myself, and implement our agency building systems and processes and blueprints and build an agency in their local market and dominate that local market if that's what they see fit. And the best part, based on this model, unlike most sales models, sales management type models, where the sad part about it is you end up losing your best people. Based on a system and a protocol and a process we created here, we retain our best people. Does, does that mean like people don't leave us? Of course they do. But our best people has a financial vested interest to stay. We figured it all that through this hybrid type of model. So let's take a look at what my first 12 years in business was. My first 12 years of business, being a sales leader, being a sales manager, brought me $3 million in sales over a 12-year period. I spent a lot of money in marketing, I spent a lot of money in staff, and a lot of mistakes grossing $3 million in sales over those 12 years. Granted, I was able to make a multi six-figure income as a single dad, living in a good school, uh, area with good schools, living in a decent area where I don't have to worry about too much crime. Boom, but that was 12 years. But as soon as I learned scale, as soon as I learned systems, as soon as I started running my business like a business, in the last five and a half years, we've done $42 million in sales, all without advertising online. And guess what? We've made more money this year than last year. Let me unpack that for you. Let me break this down real quick. On average, the last five years, we've done $7.6 million in sales. $7.6 million of volume that we've written as an organization with my, with my company all across the country. 2019, we did $11.67 million in sales. $11.6 million in sales. And this year, the pandemic year, the crazy year, 2020, year to date, the year's not even done with, obviously. But at the recording of this video here, November of 2020, not even a full year completed yet, we've not done $11 million. We've done $14.6 million. 
Let me back up here real quick. Remember I was sharing with you early on that on average I do about $250,000 a year on average with me, myself, and I with 5,000 pieces of mail with advertising and direct mail pieces? Let's go over here real quick. We're right now, year to date, we've done $189,000 in personal production. We'll wrap up this year with approximately $250,000 in sales like what we did in a personal production model. But with scale, we added in another $14.35 million in sales because of a model, because of a system, because of a blueprint. So if I do the math, 1.3 of our business, 1.3% of our income comes from our personal efforts. So in other words, 98.7% of our business doesn't come from our responsibility to have to find personal clients, which for a lot of sales leaders and sales managers, is a major blessing and a blessing not just reserved for my wife and I, but a blessing that you can experience too as well yourself. As I wrap up, I got three questions for you at the conclusion of this video. Number one, if you continue to do what you continue to do over the next five years, over the next 10 years, what are you going to have? What are you going to show for? Because here's the thing, what I realized, because I got stubborn, is that time is going to go. So doing what you're doing, are you really going to have the type of life that you want? the type of income that you want, the type of lifestyle that you want to live. Because here's the thing, five years from now, guess what? It's gonna go like this, blink, five years. Guess what, 10 years goes by, blink, blink. Boom, there's 10 years, a whole decade just went by. What's your life looking like? Here's why I say that. I started doing this 21 years ago. And 21 years ago, people said, Matt, go first, go ahead, we'll catch up with you. Let, let me, let's, show us how it works, let me see what you do with it, and we'll come on if it's successful or not. Guess what, those 21 years later, they're not with me. They didn't do anything different with their life. What's worse, they're older. They're more cynical. What's worse, they're financially broken physically. Their bodies are, aren't where they used to be 21 years ago. They're having to take more, sadly, prescription drugs and unnecessary trips to the hospital. And sadly, without the financial means to go through that and maintain the type of quality of life that they want. But that's a choice. And it's also a choice that you can make too as well. Number two, what are you afraid of? People have been telling you entrepreneurship this and capitalism this and free enterprise this. The best thing that could have happened to myself, the best thing that happened to my wife and I is entrepreneurship. It provided us economic mobility. When I see reports about the wealth gap in America and they don't have any immediate solutions how to fix the wealth gap in America. And I'm looking at this like, oh, I got a solution. I got an easy solution. Entrepreneurship, but by the way, it may not be with me. I'm not saying that is that I'm the right fit for you or the insurance industry is the right fit for you, but look at capitalism and just making sure that you find a model that you don't have to spend a lot of money on and worse, a lot of time to make a lot of mistakes. Hopefully you find a system where somebody can accelerate your path quickly uh, without having to make a lot of mistakes. Third question, what type of life do you ultimately want to live? What type of business do you actually want to own? What life did you sign up for? And so. Before I let you go, I would recommend a couple of videos here. Number one, watch this video here. If you want to know more details, four steps on how to create wealth, pandemic edition, okay? Four steps to create wealth, pandemic edition. You'd be shocked to see a lot of our guys and gals that are implementing this type of model on our platform are actually making more money this year than they did last year because a lot of them have been restricted to the Zoom culture, virtual world culture from the safety and convenience of their home or office. So check out this video on Four Steps How to Create Wealth, Pandemic Edition. The second one, check out this other video. It got a lot of, lot of juice. We didn't pay any money for advertising, but how millionaires build wealth using life insurance. It's an unspoken financial tool that a lot of people aren't talking about. I don't know why. Everybody's talking about Bitcoin and Forex and real estate and all these other things, but not talking about life insurance a financial tool that's been around for 2,000 some years. It's been around since really the beginning roots of our country. I mean, think about it. Some of the biggest buildings in America and some of the biggest cities in America are owned by who? The life insurance industry. And so if you want to crack at an industry that's a trillion, trillion dollar industry and you need less than $500 to get started in it by just obtaining state insurance license and studying for a pre-license course and pay for some state licensing fees, Without having a nod money and inventory and having to manufacture a product, consider the life insurance industry. So with that being said, guys, thanks for indulging me with this video and how I unpack to answer your question 
and how I turned $500 into a $45 million business. And therefore, allowing my wife and I to be a first generation cash flow millionaire. If we can figure it out, we can do it. Guess what? So can you. And being said, guys, I appreciate your time and attention. Drop your thoughts in the comment section below. I know what your feedback is. Thoughts good, thoughts bad, whatever you got. Throw them in the comment section below. I'd love to know what you guys are thinking. That being said, guys, stay healthy, stay safe. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.